Of course, I always like to see your beautiful faces, but. Me too, me too. That's me. (laughs) So, and, and, you know, it's a small group today. So I I would love to have people, you know, definitely unmute themselves as if you have things to share even better. I prefer if you share it out loud than in the chat, just because while I'm doing the presentation, sometimes it's hard for me to toggle to the chat or if one of you wants to just alert me and say, hey, Jody, there's something in the chat. That's terrific. So with that, I'll, I'll get started to keep us on time. My name is Jody Margolis. I am the registered dietitian, nutritionist, and nutrition program manager at the Center for Student Wellness and Health Promotion. And Quick Bites is my 30 minute little quick webinars I created during the pandemic to just offer different um, nutrition, nutrition education on a variety of topics. And, you know, since I'm still home for the summer and I love creating these workshops, I decided to keep it going during the summer with some, um, you know, maybe a little bit lighter topics, especially this one today, doing summertime nutrition tips. I was thinking about how I don't like to have to cook a lot in the summer. I feel like I'm running my air conditioning. At least I'm blessed to have AC, but I realize a lot of people don't have air conditioning. A lot of people are in busy, crowded um, home situations where there's not a lot of space in the kitchen too. So I just thought we could talk about different ways we all kind of um, cook or or kind of don't cook during, during the summer. So Um, I know you're all interns. I think everybody joining me today is an intern, but if not, um, welcome to a presentation by the Center for Student Wellness and Health Promotion. Here's our areas of focus and our programs. We offer a variety of workshops in our topic areas and one-on-one consultations as well. So excited to be hopefully coming back completely in the fall and offering things like our our wellness room and our condom co-op and more in-person services, Um, maybe some pet therapy with the pets live and in person versus virtually. So um, definitely continue to check out our services on social media to see what is happening. And you know, this is a small group. Like I said, I love participation, just being respectful of everybody. I love hearing about different cultures um, that people come to this space with, especially when we're talking um, about cooking today or, or easy ways to not cook. I, I, you know, I bring what I have grown up knowing to the table, but I, I love to hear um, what other people have. And, and also I recognize I love to cook. I've been cooking a long time, but a lot of students come with with minimal cooking skills. And so I I try to keep my ideas really basic and fun and simple. So with that being said, here's what I thought about when I kind of closed my eyes and thought about summer. And and you might like just take a minute to, to close your eyes. I'll give you a quiet moment. Think about what summer means to you. Maybe take a deep breath. What kind of comes to your mind when you think about summer, this wonderful season? Maybe some of the things I put up here, barbecues, that's what I think about, grilling outside, getting out of the kitchen. I think about having more time, maybe a little more time to sleep or sleep in, maybe a little more time to stay up late. Like with this, um, you know, we're at the, we just passed the longest day in the year, summer solstice, June 21st. So, so nice to have longer days, more time outdoors if, if you're able to. I think of all the yummy fruit right, that grows in this season and making some delicious uh, salads. I don't think I'm alone in saying I think about ice cream cones (laughs) during the summer, Uh, trying to stay cool from the thermometer going up. I mean, let's be honest, uh, everywhere with climate change, it's just getting hotter every year. Um, And so anything we can do to stay cool 
And the other thing I, I thought of um, with summer are road trips, right? Those long road trips where, yeah, maybe we got to get off the highway and grab something to eat. Um, you know, usually the options aren't, aren't terrific, but uh, anybody else, what, any, anything that um, you think of with summer? So I'll go real quick, Jody. I had a fruit as well, like all the yummy fresh fruits, salads. I'm a huge salad junkie. I, I put anything and all things on them. Iced coffee for me, because mm. I'm also a coffee fan. Um, so I had a lot of yours and lemonade. Oh, lemonade. Yeah, we're going to talk about lemonade for a second too. Anybody else? For me, I think of peaches because I think there, a lot of fruits are in season, like Beth said. Um, peaches are so good. It's oh. one of my favorite fruits. Delicious. And um, yeah, hanging out with my friends from high school. Yeah. Yeah, it's so nice, right? To to um, recalibrate our, our wellness balance and spend time with friends. And, and now that, um, you know, we're doing better in the pandemic to get to see them in person, get some, some hugs and, and, you know, see people. Anybody else? And, and I, I just want to point out um, with a couple of the things that I put on my like ways to kind of uh, enjoy summer with barbecuing. If you're somebody who you or your family likes to grill, try and stay away from blackening your meat. That raises the cancer risk. It's more carcinogenic. So marinate your meat. If you're grilling meat, marinating it in some fruit juices or just any kind of marinade is going to keep it moister and keep it from um, charring so much, but also just try to avoid that blackening. One of the other things I'll mention with, with the picture of the clock is trying to work on your um, sleep hygiene during the summer. So yeah, it is nice to get to sleep in a little bit later in the summer, but actually it's healthier for us if we rise closer to matching with, with the sun rising and the sun setting kind of. So trying to work on improved sleep and improved bedtime and wake time, and staying consistent if we can. So not having different times for the weekdays versus the weekends. You know, if you just pick one or two things from today's talk that you want to work on and kind of work towards a small goal and then step into another goal, that's a, a great thing to do. Um, I'll say with ice cream, and you might be surprised to hear a dietitian talking about ice cream. I hope you're not surprised because I'm just a human who likes ice cream. But I think we need to also give space to enjoy food just because we enjoy it and to not have guilt or shame attached to eating certain foods, right? So yeah, maybe we don't wanna eat three scoops of ice cream every day in the summer because it's hot, but you know, it's okay to enjoy an ice cream cone every once in a while. We don't need to supersize it, right? Maybe we don't need the huge waffle cone. Maybe getting in a cup is enough. Maybe getting just a single scoop is enough. Um, but let yourself enjoy it too. And then lastly, with just this road trip sign, I was thinking a lot about that and how sometimes now, if I know I'm going to be on a long road trip, I'm better about planning ahead and packing snacks in the car, maybe even a small cooler or cooler bag, making sandwiches ahead of time. I know when I've flown now, I even do that. I'll bring a cooler bag with me and actually pack a meal to take so that I'm not spending all the cost at the airport and I'm eating a little healthier. But you know what, even if I have to stop at a McDonald's or a place on a long road trip, you know, there's always a, a better choice within each restaurant, right? So maybe you don't get the super size, maybe you don't do the soda, maybe you share the fries with somebody in the family, but always just kind of ask yourself what would be the best choice within this given situation, right? So enough about that. Let's just talk about summer eating strategies. So to me, choosing what's in season is really easy in the summer, right? Because it is the, the season of abundance. It is when things are just growing so happily. We're so lucky to live in Southern California or in California in general, where so much produce is grown really for the whole country. And when you choose what's in season, 
it means that it's going to be more nutrient dense. It's going to be, especially if you buy local, you're going to um, be, you know, more friendly to the environment. Things aren't getting shipped from, you know, Brazil or Thailand, or, you know, it's so wonderful that we have this global marketplace that we can eat foods all year round. Um, but there's an environmental cost to that. And there's a societal cost to that too. So when we can support local farmers, farmers markets, or just be eating what's in season now, in, in traditional Chinese medicine and Indian Ayurvedic medicine, what we're doing is um, we're, we're really kind of going back to how ancient humans ate, right? We ate what grew in our local environment and what grew in that season and what grew in that season was what was best for us at that time of year. So you think about what grows in the summertime and it's a lot of very hydrating, juicy fruits and vegetables, right? And when the heat of the summer is on, these, these things are keeping us really well hydrated. Sometimes they're offering vitamin protection that helps us with things like um, just the sun and sunburns and things like that. So, and it's cheaper, it's cheaper to buy what's in season. I mean, berries, when we buy them in the winter are really expensive compared to, you know, buying them in the summer. So it's better for your budget. So if you're a student on a tight budget, be a seasonal eater. Um, I just put stick to a schedule because I think what happens is, again, if we're sleeping through breakfast, and then maybe skipping lunch, then we get to the food craving stage. And all of a sudden those fruits and veggies and other things don't look as appealing to us. And so we really don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure that um, we're eating regularly, like every, I'd say, you know, three to four hours, you wanna be having a, a meal or maybe a light snack um, so that you're getting in like three meals a day to meet your nutrition needs and maybe a snack a day. So also, if you're home a lot more during the summer, try to avoid the mindless eating, you know, just the boredom eating, check in with yourself. If that's something um, from today that you take away that you want to work on, maybe that's something you think about. We'll talk a little bit just about what I keep in the fridge for just quick, easy, smart snacks. Oops, let's go back. Um, watch your portion size hydrate. You don't want to confuse thirst with hunger. Summertime is a fun time to be going to more parties, gatherings, baseball games, soccer games, what, you know, barbecues, but watch the alcohol for calories. Also, it can dehydrate you. Watch the caffeine. Like Beth said, we love our coffee and our iced coffee, but think about cooling things. So iced coffee is going to be better. It's, you know, going to, at least it's cold. Um, maybe you try and if you're somebody who was becoming too reliant on caffeine, um, maybe you try and work on that area. Maybe as your sleep improves this summer, you feel less caffeine dependent. And then again, in, in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, they really um, want you to try and reduce spicy foods, fried foods. Those are the heavy warming foods that we don't need during summer, right? Summer's light, we want coolness. And we wanna try and avoid those fad diets because uh, you know, all that advertising about like, try this fad diet so you can wear a bathing suit this summer. Guess what? Everybody's got a bathing suit body. If you let yourself um, feel okay with that, and I know that's not easy for everybody, but, but Look at why you might lean into fad diets and ask yourself, is there maybe a more sustainable, long-term, healthier solution for you? Um, and, and also um, how it affects your, your body image and your self-image, right? So we just, um, social media can really do a lot of damage to, to our body image and to promoting some really rigid, potentially harmful fad diets. So. That being said, I just want to inspire some fun ideas for this summer. So one thing I do, and you can you can see, I poured myself, I infused lemon, some cucumber, blueberries, and some sparkling mineral water. Um, and this makes it fun for me to drink throughout the day, but I love infusing water or sparkling water. 
I don't know if any of you also um, enjoy doing this. You can see the sprigs of rosemary on the right and the mint on the left, really refreshing. So if you're somebody who finds water really boring, don't let yourself be bored. The woman who came up with Hint Water, that's now like a multi-million dollar industry. She was just a mom whose kids always complain about drinking water. And she started playing around with infusing water. Um, if you're from different cultures, like Mexican culture, Jamaica tea, like a hibiscus tea, making a nice cool tea, try to do less sugar though. So the, the, um, if you're able to make some different teas, herbal iced teas, but not add too much sweetener, or if you like to add some of the, you know, like stevia or the monk fruit sweetener, you can try that. I, I personally like just like a little bit of honey if I need something sweet. Um, Indian culture has lassis. Those are like cold yogurt drinks or um, kefir, uh, which is like a fermented yogurt drink. Those are also cooling lots of calcium in, in those drinks too. So anybody do any fun uh, infused water at home or in their hydro? So hopefully this inspires you to like, you know, fill a big pitcher at home, surprise your friends or family or roommates and, and make it really fun. So Erica said not, she doesn't, but she wants to try it now. You got it's her so motivated. Fun. It's so <laughs> fun. I love it. All the different colors. It really just adds a tiny bit of flavor without adding, you know, sugar to your water. Berries are so full of antioxidants and phytochemicals. So all the different berries are wonderful for you. I don't want you to think one berry it, is superior over the other. You'd think acai rules the world or blueberries, but you know, all those different colors are important to get. In the summer, I tend to like um, more cold breakfast than hot. So I do a lot of uh, Greek yogurt parfaits. So I'll buy a big tub because it's cheaper to buy a big tub of Greek yogurt. I'll toss some berries in it. I will add a drizzle of honey, or if I'm out of honey, I'll add maybe a small spoonful of a jam, whatever kind of jam I have at home. Uh, and I like to add fresh um, citrus zest. So I have a nice like little uh, microplane. So, you know, a little zester, kind of like a small cheese grater. And I just zest a little bit of orange or lemon on top of that. And it's delicious. So you don't need much sugar. And you're getting away from all the added sugar that they put in um, all the mixed yogurts out there. I, I'd have to say the yogurt area of the grocery store, it's almost like a candy store, all the, all the candy toppings in those like Chobani flips where there's maybe three bites of yogurt, but a whole bunch of crunchy toppings. You can make it yourself and make it healthier. You know, throw it into smoothies. You can buy frozen bags of berries too, that's fine. Um, if you have room in your budget to buy organic, great. Um, if you don't, that's totally okay too. Uh, you know, you could do overnight oats instead of oatmeal. If you don't want hot cereal in the morning, which doesn't sound great, let's be honest, during the summer, Google overnight oats recipes. There's tons of fun recipes to do that. I like to add berries to my salads, um, depending on the salad. Like if I'm doing, um, a spinach salad or a dark leafy green, I might throw strawberries, goat cheese, and some, some sliced almonds. Some people hate fruit in their salad. So I think this is an individual thing. Maybe if you've never tried fruit in your salad, you know, give it a whirl, see what you think. Summer is a time for like adventure and exploring different flavors. Uh, I love cobblers for dessert. So um, I love like um, whoever said the, the peach peaches is their favorite fruit, love doing like peach cobblers or peach crumbles. And you can look for really easy recipes. You can even do them. If you have a toaster oven, you don't want to turn the big oven on. Um, you know, you can even do it without necessarily using your toaster. I, I bought a book. I'll show you all, um, at target the other day in the dollar little area, there was a $5 book called meal in a mug. And it had all these different recipes 
for meals you can make in the microwave in a coffee mug and it included like a, a cobbler dessert recipe so there's those are still at target run to your target five bucks it was kind of a fun little impulse buy I'm so going over there. Yeah, I have it right here. I don't know if you can. Oops. I love the one three five dollar section. Oh, yeah. So look, meal in a mug. I mean, that's adorable. So cute, right? And I bought it so that I could keep it in my office at work for for the college students to see. That might be good giveaways too, Jody, for your team area. Yeah, yeah. Now cucumbers. I have a son who hates cucumbers. I have a turtle in my backyard who loves cucumbers and I love cucumbers. So um, if you're somebody who likes them, a cold cucumber soup is a fun thing to try. Also just dicing them up and tossing them with some fresh vinegar and dill is a really easy summer side dish um, that's delicious with anything from like chicken to fish. So really easy to use cucumbers, great with different dips. Um, instead of chips, you know, just slice up your cucumbers. I already showed you, love them in water. Um, I love cold Asian noodle salads um, with some, a little bit of soy sauce, ginger, sesame oil, and you can toss cucumbers in there. If you like Japanese sunamono cucumber salad, look for a recipe. If you've enjoyed it at a restaurant, teach yourself how to make it. It's a really easy side dish to make. And, um, if you've ever had the Greek yogurt dip tzatziki, that's also a really easy dip to make with Greek yogurt and cucumbers, garlic, and lemon juice. So, um, you know, if you notice when you go out to different ethnic restaurants, there's foods that you've liked, but you've never tried to make them yourself. Anybody ever tried to make something a little outside of their comfort zone? Well, then it's time to start, y'all. Time to, to, to get adventurous and, and step outside the box. Maybe get together with some friends now that it's safer and like have a little potluck thing and share recipes. I love tomatoes. I This year's the first year in a long time that my tomatoes has have successfully grown. Uh, just so you know, you can even grow tomatoes just in a bag of soil. You can bring a bag of soil home from the nursery and plant the tomato plant right in the open bag of soil. Just poke some holes in the bottom of the soil bag. So if you don't have a, really a yard, you just have a tiny little space and you don't even have a pot. My sister taught me this. You, you don't need much to grow the tomatoes, just a good bag of soil and plant it right in there. But buy them at the market. They're delicious right now. They are the best tasting of the whole year, our summer tomatoes. If you've ever had a caprese salad from an Italian restaurant, that's with tomatoes and mozzarella. Easy to make. If you've ever had Italian panzanella bread salad, that's made with stale bread. So pretty fun and easy. Let a couple pieces of bread sit out and get a little dry and stale, or you can force force dry them by unfortunately turning the oven on and putting them at a low heat for a little bit just to get toasty. Or you could even cheat, throw them in a toaster and toast it and kind of rip up the pieces of bread. And then you toss it with fresh sliced tomatoes, olive oil, a little vinegar. You can look up panzanella recipes with your tomatoes. Don't storm in the fridge, always storm on the counter. They're best at room temperature. You really don't want to uh, when your tomatoes are cold, they don't have as much flavor. Gazpacho, Mexican cold tomato soup or Spanish gazpacho, really delicious. So if you are a tomato fan, but you've never had the cold tomato soup gazpacho, really easy one to make in a blender, in a Cuisinart, in a Nutribullet. Um, you can chop it with uh, diced cucumbers, bell peppers, onions, cilantro. If you like it spicy, you can add a little zip of jalapeno. Same thing with salsas. And then I love in the summer just to, um, instead of using any kind of jarred sauce or having to heat up the stovetop, just dicing tomatoes with some fresh garlic and a good olive oil, little salt and pepper, and just tossing that over either noodles or zoodles. Like if I don't want to even cook noodles, 
I, I have a cheapy Bed Bath & Beyond $10 uh, zucchini spiralizer where I can just turn my zucchini into long noodles. Uh, you know, you can look for a gadget like that. You can also buy the frozen zoodles at the market and just throw those in the microwave. So any, anybody else have some fun ideas with tomatoes? You can stuff them with like tuna salad. You can stuff tomatoes with um, a little bit of cream cheese or some different fun hummus dips. So lots to look at there. With um, beans, just think canned beans are great. You can rinse them, you can eat them cold. They're already cooked. You can make chipotle style bowls. You can make um, Asian bowls with edamame, the Japanese soybeans. You can use chickpeas for Mediterranean bowls. So if you don't wanna to have to have a lot of meat during the summer, if you're trying to go more plant-based and you don't wanna cook a lot, kind of lean into beans, right? So look up different recipes for beans. I also love to say like, get a rotisserie chicken at the market. If you don't wanna to have to cook, but you wanna be able to have some chicken for a few days, do that. Here's a picture of the zucchini noodle dish, like at the top, this is a more um, like kind of Asian style one. Uh, I love, if anyone's ever tried to make Vietnamese spring rolls on their own, really fun. You buy those um, circular rice noodle, like rice paper wrappers. You just soak them in a bit of water. The directions come right on the package. And then I'll throw in some shredded carrots, some tofu or cold shrimp some you know cilantro or meat um, mint and you can look for recipes for easy peanut dipping sauces so this is a really nice cold lunch or um, afternoon snack so I do buy frozen shrimp a lot that have already been cooked so that I can throw those easily into some different dishes and this is a fun dish that I've made before. It's a watermelon feta salad with some fresh mint. Um, so if you've never tried watermelon with a salty cheese like a feta, I hadn't tried it till a couple of years ago. It kind of sounded weird to me and now I love it. So, you know, again, just kind of pushing yourself to try different things. Corn, you know, you can steam it in the microwave. You just wrap it tightly in saran wrap on a plate take the husk off. Um, so if you don't want to boil corn on the stovetop, you can do it that way. You can also soak corn in the husk for like 20 minutes and then grill it, which is, I love grilled corn, but I've learned to just cheat and cook it in the microwave sometimes. And um, then I turn it into like a Mexican elote uh, corn salad or a corn bean salsa. So you don't have to just eat it off the cob. There's lots of fun ways to do corn. I mentioned um, the watermelon salad, but also a good agua fresca, really refreshing. You don't have to add sugar, just you know, whirl the cold or frozen watermelon and water for a refreshing drink or make like a sorbet in your freezer. And then one of my favorite things to do in summer, I'm trying to get through these real quick, is homemade pestos. So I love getting basil or cilantro for more Mexican style um, pesto, some fresh garlic or olive oil, because um, you need that liquid oil, right? Or a, a grapeseed oil. Then you can throw some nuts in, whichever kind of nuts you like. Pine nuts are good for an Italian pesto, but I like to play around with um, pistachios um, and cilantro or almonds. I, I love lots of garlic. Sometimes I'll do a roasted red pepper pesto where I buy a jar of roasted red peppers and I whirl that in the blender with some olive oil, sometimes some breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese to thicken it up. And I'll toss that either over noodles or zoodles or use it as a dip. And so I made a pesto the other day and threw it into a jelly jar and it'll last in my fridge for a good three to five days. So look for pesto recipes really fun and easy to make really healthy for you can make big platters of grilled veggies also really um, easy eggplant is a great substitute for meat so is mushrooms so if you like these foods or if you've never tried them another great way to go plant-based in the summer and then uh you know they cook easily so you can grill them outside um, you, you know, if you want to turn your oven on, you can roast them in the oven, but they, they taste great grilled as well. Not everybody has access to a barbecue. So, 
you know, you can even do these in like a, a good toaster oven or an air fryer if you have an air fryer. So just to kind of wrap up, um, rely on your appliances that just plug in, right? An air fryer is great, a toaster oven's great, blenders are great. If you've got access to a little hibachi barbecue, terrific. Try and focus on raw when you can. You're gonna get a lot of nutrition that way. So the raw fruits and veggies, kind of stepping outside your box, but have it ready, right? Keep it available and in view so that it looks delicious and you want to, when you open your fridge, you see these delicious looking, you know, fruits and vegetables all cut up. Maybe um, your goal this summer is to, to try and learn how to ferment some foods, you know, making kombucha or kimchi or, um, you try sauerkraut for the first time or kefir because those are all really good for your gut microbiome and, um, you know, helps build our immune system. So if you've never had fermented foods, maybe you try them. And if you like them, maybe you learn how to ferment yourself this summer and, and then aim for these S's, right? Sandwiches, slaws, salads, and smoothies. These are kind of my hallmarks of summer. I get really creative with the different sandwiches, different bread, trying rye and pumpernickel and a good sourdough wheat bread. And um, I'll put a Granny Smith apple slice on a turkey sandwich, or I'll do a portobello mushroom sandwich. So like, you know, Google, the sky's the limit for how creative you can get with some of these different salads and sandwiches and things. And lastly, I just wanted to include some nutrition resources for y'all. So um, I love our Anteater Test Kitchen. If you don't follow them on Instagram, add them. They have the best recipes. And I also love this dietitian, Debbie. She has a great Instagram account to follow. And then these other two, they're more vegan based. Um, I'm not vegan, but I love to be inspired with new recipes that are plant based. So I I really enjoy um, these two accounts. And then the podcast, oops, uh, Spot On is a dietitian from Boston University. Uh, she does a good nutrition podcast to listen to if you just wanna like walk this summer and get some great nutrition information. I love Trader Joe's website. They always post um, really fun recipes. And then I, I put a cookbook at the bottom on the right. Um, I just read about this cookbook yesterday in the LA Times. So I wanted to add that there, but the Mia Lime recipe app is a fun one that I've got on my smartphone and I recommend to students. So just take a picture of this resource page so that you have access to it. And then I'll wrap up by turning, bringing my computer over just so you can kind of see, hopefully you can, you can tell me if you can see, okay, but I'm gonna open my fridge, my new fridge, cause my old fridge died. So that you can- So hungry, Jody. Oh my gosh. So, but just take a look, right? I've got, this is my homemade pesto, but I've got cherries, I've got blueberries. I've got some fresh basil here, avo. I've got leftover beans and rice. Um, I got my portobello mushroom and my Greek yogurt. So, you know, when I open the fridge, I'm, I'm not tempted, right, to, um, to eat something else. I make it look really appealing. Now, there's no perfect way to eat, and I'm not a perfect eater, and I'm not saying if we don't open my pantry, there aren't some, you know, tortilla chips and other things in there, too. It's all about balance and moderation, but make your fruit and veggies look good. Have them ready. Have them cut up, right? And they'll inspire you. So any, any questions, I want to just be um, cognizant of the time. And please ask questions if you have them because Jody's yeah. great at answering them or think about them and email her.